So let me let me let me set the stage for those people that don't know what you're talking about. For for me, and this is the narrative that I got from it. It's it's Niles the new guy, where it's like, hey, look, here's Golden Guardians. They're practicing things. We're learning things, and then Niles is just getting dumpstered on uh, with with throwing the lane and, and throwing things. So I just wanted to kind of set that high, set this uh, said this thing about Niles, like, hey. I don't mind the GP pick into the Renekton, but he just needs to play it better. He's throwing the lane, right? That seemed right. to be dominating a lot of the conversation. So, yes. so for those that didn't watch the games or didn't see that segment, th- this is what LS is referencing. So LS, now now go ahead oh. with your point against this. What, what did right, you right. I mean, with? No, Niles, uh, I mean, he, he did blunder the lane, obviously. Um, but even aside from him blundering the lane... What should have been a more talked about point is GP's relevancy in the game despite so many atrocities going wrong. Mm-hmm. Like that that should be a talking point because GP's his barrels and his ultimate were a really key reason they could hang on in spots where realistically they should not have been able to. And I, I would uh I, I would uh, assert that these are unrealistic events if you play a hundred games, right? Like what happens to GP in the early laning phases. I do not think it's practical to assume that these are things that are likely to occur. Now, obviously, they did occur inside of the game, right? But it felt like there was a lot of harped on points, and there was other things like uh, saying that the shield bow was bad. That was really weird. Um, oh, wait, the sh- they said why. shield bow on GP is they bad? They said shield bow was bad. Yeah, they said shield bow was bad on GP. Um, wait, wait, what did they think you should have go? To build it. They, they said he should have gone Sunder. Now, <clears throat> um, the other thing that was really weird to me is Iconic was solo losing the game. I did. I never heard it brought up, right? Once, right. and I'm just wondering what are we what are we watching? What is what is going on here? The, I mean, the I didn't hear any of this. Phase, <clears throat> I, I ended up having a casino on my stream. Uh, you know, the entire night that Syndra was being picked or hovered, where you know, let's see if Syndra can manage to spell mid lane. You know, by level three, and so consistently they can't. But there, there's so many egregious errors happening in laning phase that are never being talked about. And it's so laughable. It, it's so hilarious that now on my stream, we have the, the Twitch predictions for how bad someone's going to mess up lane by wave three or four, because it's so consistent. And it seems weird to me that there is a narrative about a player that up until this game had been reasonably playing his laning phases actually really well relative to all the other laning phases present inside of the lock-in tournament is being harped upon so fucking negatively. And it's like, I, I don't, I don't know what game we're watching. We're yeah. just, we're not, we're not seeing the same well, things, I guess. I, I think I, the I other know. issue, I think the other issue is because like, uh, so I didn't, I didn't hear this segment because I obviously <laughs> am a uh, band from co-streaming. So I have to like do the, <laughs> I have to do the live viewing and obvious. And if I, if I have a guest, I have to mute because obviously then they can't hit the, hear the guest, whatever. So I didn't hear the segment, but um, I, I don't even know what they can even talk about because unless they have pro view, you don't actually know what the mistake inside of the lane. Like, sure. You can look at the, like if you took a snapshot of the lane, right. At level, at level like fucking four and you see impact full HP, like with a rage bar stacked. And then you see Niles half HP out of mana on GP versus uh, on GP as a GP versus a Renekton. You know something went wrong in the lane, but since you don't actually like see it, it's hard to like even comment on what went wrong. Besides for the fact of like, yeah, this is not how the matchup should go. Ideally, like I feel like that's like a a, pa- a point that you can just do in passing. You don't actually need to uh, harp on it really. And then also like the fact that he messed up lane wouldn't have been as punishing for the team if Syndra didn't TP up there. Um, on that wave. Like the fact that Syndra then dove him off that, which I think that just shows like good communication from Impact. And I feel like Impact is actually just looking like the best player in LCS right now. I think that that is, is what really blew the entire game open. So normally you can get away with, with stuff like that. But the, what I want to what, what I want to see is when that same situation arises, if somebody doesn't get punished, but they mess up that badly, are people going to actually talk about it? Because I feel like people only really bring these topics up when plays are punished because then they're like, Oh, well, because he died, he didn't get away with it. Now it's like relevant. Now it's a huge talking point. You can do, you can make that same bad laning phase as Niles and you can base, come back with like a sheen into lane, be completely fine after that. And then, you know, magically you somehow played the lane like 10 times better. So I don't know. That's, that's my only issue is it feels like people are, are only willing to criticize these types of things. If the enemy like punishes it as hard as possible. So, so that's, that's interesting to me, Dom, that, that point there, because the way that, you and LS are able to identify it to me sounds like a coach and a player 
right? Where it's like, hey, we look at everything and we can see what went right, what went wrong, regardless if we're punished or not. For example, if we use uh, American football, like if someone misses a block, like uh, on a passing play, and but the quarterback doesn't mm. get hit, the announcers are never going to bring that up. They're never going to. Yeah, bring they're not going to be like, oh, that was a that was a that was a missed block right there, and like yeah. the quarterback, like yeah, yeah, quarterback yeah, yeah. Has exactly. to fucking scramble out and shit, like exactly. I know, so, man. so I I will say that it's just I I don't know because because high would obviously be able to see that right a, a, a former pro player that is active and and has the stuff still like should be able to catch that thing, but I don't know if the broadcast is the appropriate place to bring that up because fans. Fans' attention, like, you know, they, they only have certain amount of attention points. You do want to direct them towards what did go right. So uh, I, I will push back on that point a little bit, but more on the fact that it's like, hey, you see that and it makes sense to us because we're looking for those things and the capacity to, like, focus on laning phase prowess over and over again, regardless of the result, is something that mm. you can see, but maybe not something that either the analyst can see, but I think they can. But more importantly, that they think the audience will understand or is important at that time. So, so I guess I guess my question that I would want to ask is um, at least LS because he was listening to it. So, what was the what was the itemization they suggested outside of like Sunder? Because the the, the uh, whole reason why you go Essence Reaver into into um, Shield Bow is because not only is it just a crit build where you're going to hit 100 crit eventually with the build, it also has the Sheen proc built into like the Essence Reaver now. So if you go Sunderer, then you actually can't get 100% crit. So I'm just wondering what build they want. Do they want like full Bruiser, I mean, like Divine the, Sunderer, the, Starax, or what? The, the thing uh, that was strange is um, I think the comment was that you don't go Shield Bow when you fall so far behind. Um, and that you should just go Blunder or Divine Sunderer. Um, <laughs> Blunder, okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I call, I call it Divine Blunder when, it, when you know, I think when it's it doesn't being work. built out of place. Oh, okay. When, it, when, it, when it's being built out of place. Uh, you know, it's Divine Sunder when it, it's normal, Divine Blunder when, um, you know. Uh, yeah, it's, okay. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I, I found that weird. Now, obviously, yeah, Niles, Niles does uh, troll the laning phase, right? Um, but it, it, it just seemed odd to me that that was a talking point, right? Because the reality is, is like, any other champion, maybe, <clears throat> not any other champion, but most other champions in the game, if they get that far behind against Renekton this early, why is the champion still having so much relevance? That's a talking point, right? But it's one that, and I, I think, an analyst should talk about, right? Because the analyst should be able to derive the fact that this champion fell unnaturally far behind, had a series of unfortunate events, and is still providing value. That's not something that an everyday viewer can see. Right, yeah. they can't discern that. They just see, oh, gangplank lost, v five o fum, thumb in the bum. But well, I guess I would push back because I feel like I feel like the reason why he had relevance is because EG didn't play like the third dragon that cleanly. Like because they started right, like right, inting, right. like the the Nidalee died it, uh, and, and all that stuff. I feel like that's like why GP crawled back into relevance. No, no, right. Game. And, and the, the the other thing about this though that that's weird to me is um, I, I'm only harping on the the, the GP Renekton game here because. Niles has been like one of the the focal points uh, over the last couple of, or well, over the last you know two weeks, and I just found it really strange because I can't, for the life of me, uh, agree. Right, um, and now this is all subjective, of course, um, and everyone can have their own subjective uh, point of view, right? But I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what people are looking at when they're looking at all of the landing phases across the lock-in tournament and genuinely think Niles is playing bad. I, I don't know. It's really he made, he made revenge, very like a revenge thing too. He he, he played he, he played like pretty well, and like the mistakes he made in the other laning phases were like really really small. Like there was that one that I remember. I remember I don't remember what champion it was on. Was it maybe it was on Camille where he should have like slow pushed like like wait like level like five. He, he could have slow pushed and turned that into a dive with Galio, but instead he like like half pushed the wave and the wave ended up frozen in front of like Huni's turret. But besides for that, I felt like he was he pretty much outlaned Huni. I mean he he just. Completely outlaid Hooney. Whereas <laughs> if a rookie is coming in and, and beating a veteran that's supposed to be like such a high pickup or like, you know, somebody who's such a storied player, I feel like that deserves some level of praise. So, yeah. So then when we look at Golden Guardians, where where, where do we see their needed I, okay, areas so, of growth going dude, into I, the regular I, season? If there's one player I'm going to flame on this team, it's going to be Newbie. I think Newbie is not good right now. Like just... It doesn't feel like he's an LCS player when I'm watching him. 
just like the just the way he moves around the map his map movements seem very weird and then also just like his his um idea of how you should play team fights doesn't seem like it's there like he goes for a lot of like the, the timing that he throws his skill shots doesn't seem like he's used to playing against really good players because if you throw like a hook if you're if you're a thresh and you start a fight by trying to throw a hook when they see you in the middle of the river you're literally just seeing yourself because no no pro player is gonna hit get hit by like a random hook like that when you're you're just like manning up to them you're not even flashing or anything and then you're also just like yeah when you throw the hook you're, you're not able to move so then you just end up taking like poke and it completely like changes the fight so for for me, the, the biggest point of improvement is like support. I mean, there's a massive support gap in NA, in my opinion. It's like Vulcan Core yep. JJ are the fucking yep. kings, and then everyone else is way below that. I think that that's the 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 biggest role where there's um or the the, the role that's in most need of improvement in NA. <laughs>